so I went ahead and got a new stove top for the truck camper. I was looking at some stove tops that were built in, but all the camper stove tops that I've seen, people were leaving really bad reviews and they didn't work that well. So I went ahead and stuck with the camping stove. If I wanted to cook in the truck, I could. If I wanted to take the stove out of the truck, and cook on like a picnic table or somewhere else I can. Also, my last stove top had two burners. I never even used the burner on this side, but on this one, it has a griddle. So that is pretty freaking cool. Pretty much cook breakfast, quesadillas, anything on the griddle. You also have a normal stove top over here. So I am pretty freaking stoked to be able to have a griddle in the truck. Has a freaking electric starter too, that's awesome. Gonna have to store a bunch of these in the truck like last time. This thing is long too. I was expecting this griddle to be real small, but it's a decent size. Alright, first time turning her on. Dude, it's so freaking sick with the uh, electric starter. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> Burned a little bit of my arm hairs already. Freaking sweet. I am freaking stoked about this. Just having the griddle. I cannot wait to cook a full breakfast on this thing. It's gonna be freaking epic, but. There's a new stove for the truck. So I went ahead and did some work off camera to get the ice box, which is now there, to get locked in place. So first off, I made it all level. I attached some uh, pieces of plywood here. I also drilled three holes, and then drilled three holes to the metal, uh, I'm not sure even what it's called. It's like casing for the motor and all that, on the back of that. And then I screwed through the bottom up to the ice box through that metal housing. So that is how the icebox will be locked into place. I'm hoping it is enough, but we won't know until we find out, right? But the icebox cannot move. I tugged on it and it tugged and picked up the entire base. Of course, whenever I screw down the base to the truck, it won't be able to tilt or anything. So, so here's kind of a mock-up of how I want this. I went ahead and filled up these jugs full of water. Then I went ahead and cut out this wall here. It is right where it needs to be. But I'm making this water jug area pretty tight because I don't want these jugs to be bouncing around. That's a lot of weight bouncing around. And then of course I got the sink held up by this 2x4. This is gonna be the general area of the sink. And then I cut these walls to where the countertop will go right over this fiberglass slip. It will hide that lip. It'll all be counter space, it'll be nice and neat. So that's kind of where I'm getting at right here. This is where I'm at so far. I threw it all together to kind of get an idea. Ugh, where do we go from here, guys? I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. My creativity levels are pretty low right now. It's from a rare disease I have called lack of sleep. It's pretty scientific. I won't get into it right now, but yep, it sucks. Jesus. there's the piece we just cut and this piece will slide right back in here just like so and then that will box off these water jugs from bouncing around and then that will also give us a place to screw in this face piece here we'll screw it in from the top from the bottom and then now we have a place to screw it on this side and then of course the face here will get screwed into here I just got the hole back here cut out. That is for the ice box and the water pump wire to run through. 
And then I also got the holes for the drawers cut out as well. That's just to open them up. But now we can go ahead and throw this back in the truck. All right, so it is the next day. Let's go ahead and finish this cabinet area. I got this piece over here. This is going to be the top. So I'm gonna cut that down to size. All right, so here is where I'm at on the counter. I got the top cut, it is perfect, looking freaking good. And then I also cut these little pieces of strip that will go around the edge. That is just in case any water splashes over the sink, it will stop right here. And it'll be easy to clean and wipe it off. Nothing will get behind the counter. So, looking freaking awesome, man. Ha, no nails. So I just got the top screwed on. I also traced around the sink so we can know where to put the sink, but there's a problem. So with faucets, most people put a faucet behind the sink. It looks like there's room over here, but there's actually not because of the lip right here on the cap. So we cannot put the sink or the faucet here. It'd be really weird over here. So the only place I have left to put it is over here. So I'm gonna have to move this line, move it back about maybe three inches or so. I got the hole for the faucet cut, now I need to cut out the square for the sink. Let's see if we did it first try. Oh, she's tight. After 17 adjustments, she finally fits in there nice and tight. So I'm thinking about getting my router out and routing around these edges and making this flush with the countertop. That way if I ever need to clean this and wipe it into the sink, there won't be that gap right there and it'll be nice and easy, so. Right, here comes seven hours of grabbing. Oh. Saw that freaking everywhere. Better work the first try, dang it. Come on, first try. Let's get it done. All right, fit. Holy crap. So, it fit, but my concern is once I put some adhesive under there, I'm gonna do 5200. I'm worried that that might lift it up a little bit, causing it to be off. But she fit, first try, I'm happy. So there is the sink. Like I said, I may have to make that a little bit deeper just because of the adhesive I add to it. Might uh, pick it up a little bit, but I'm gonna do that tomorrow. I'm so sick of this sawdust, but this looks freaking awesome, man. I'm digging it. Looks so freaking cool. That sink just, it sends it over the top. I 